अर्जुन उवाच संन्यास्य महाबाहो तत्वच्छा वेदि त्याग से हृषिकेश पृथ्केशी निशोदन श्री भगवान्वाच कम्याम कर्मण न्यास संन्यास कवयो विदु सर्वकर्मफलग प्राहुस्याग विचक्षण त्याज्यम दोषवदीतेके कर्म प्राहुर्मनीषिण यज्ञदान तप कर्म न त्याज्यम चापरे निश्चय शृणु मे त्र त्यागे भरत सत्तम त्यागो हि पुरुष व्याघ्र त्रिविध संप्रकृति यज्ञदान तप कर्म न त्याज्यम कार्यमे तत यज्ञोदान तपश्च पावना मनीषिण सो आज वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग दैट द डेफिनेशन ऑफ संन्यास एंड त्याग इन फैक्ट एस्टरडे आई थॉट ऑफ आस्किंग ए आई the view of this is sanyasa and tyaga i had a good fun with ai and uh, so what is the view of sanyasa and tyaga of lord krishna in bhagavad gita that to on based on 18th chapter and that fellow exactly biased by so called intelligence gave the verse number 2 and 3 then i had to ask a this is a verse number 2 and 3 explanation and this is not the teaching of lord krishna lord krishna quoted this is how people think this is the common thinking of common people or different type of people then the fellow writes me back oh oh sorry i apologize true whatever you are saying it is true then comes up with new which is not that great but okay then when i asked hey look knowing all these facts and figures why did you misguide me in the beginning i was clear in my question then the person starts writing I thought it will be okay for you. <laughs> I apologize. I thought it will be okay for you. However, you need to find out a scholar to understand better. Then, of course, I start writing. Who is scholar? You think that scholar can teach? Again, you are wrong. Please highlight when you are talking this sort of sensitive issue that you should write that you should advise that one should. Do. approach a guru not a scholar yes yes you are right <laughs> okay it goes on and on <laughs> just to highlight this point that how people can get carried away with reference to anything in life including present day ai that's why lord krishna is very careful so he highlighted look for sanyasa and also for tyaga there are different types of meanings so in short they are divided into two categories 
So in general, people think sannyas means karma sannyasa, whereas tyaga means karma follow tyaga. Correct. Then when it is a karma sannyasa, then how? Whether it is only num all the five karmas or only third, fourth, fifth. So there is also issues. Then yes, even if one and two to be done, but without any attachment, because some people think karma is doshavat, is full of defects. But Lord Krishna says, "Hey, look, all these things are fantastic, but the definition when you look at, so he highlights, look, that verse number four." निश्चयम सुनमें तत्र त्यागे भरत सत्तम त्यागो ही पुरुष बैग्रह त्रिविध सम प्रकृति तह सो ही केम फोरवर्ड विथ अनदर वे सो देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ दिस संन्यास त्याग कन्फ्यूजन बट आई वुड लाइक टू से देर इज नो डिफरेंस बिटवीन संन्यास एंड त्याग सो व्हाट यू मीन एज संन्यास दैट इज त्यागम What you mean, tyaga is sannyasa. Both are synonyms. That's the first point. Then he highlights: look, not there are two types of sannyasa or tyaga renunciation, but in fact there are three types. He added one more. So that we have seen in last class. Then in the fifth verse, that is what we are supposed to see: yagya dana tapah karma. न त्याज्यम कार्य तत्ोदान तपस्व पावना मनीषिण नाउ व्हेन इट टॉक्स दैट यज्ञ दान तप दिस इज टू बी कंटिन्यूड सो दैट मींस व्हाई एंड हाउ आल्सो वी नीड टू लुक एट फर्स्ट पॉइंट वी वुड लाइक टू बी वेरी क्लियर लॉर्ड कृष्ण when he addresses or a teacher when addresses student always looks at the student mind to be very honest whenever i say something i don't look at what you do what you don't do. i look at your mind and talk but generally what happens to you you react so first thing is reaction some people express some people don't express this is the difference okay <laughs> what does he think what does he know he doesn't understand me this is another way helpless he doesn't understand me always he talks from his standpoint he has to come down to our level blah 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 which is very unfortunate because when a teacher looks at the mind this is what the methodology of teaching here very nicely is being highlighted the definition of renunciation differs based on the student one has to be very clear and careful this is called methodology of teaching because if you observe the whole humanity with reference to sanyasa to whom to talk who not to talk whole humanity can be divided into two categories so based on your level of understanding the teaching will be unfolded to you and teaching will be helpful to you or else it will be time pass how and why i can say so one type of people those who have antakarana suddhi gyana yogyata those who have purification of the mind for them the definition of 
Sanyasa is entirely different. Whereas the other type of people, those who are common, so whose antakarana is not suddham, is asuddham, predominantly with ahankar, raga and dvesha. So those people are called as common human beings. They don't have mature mind. So what you mean this word common human mind? So I call them they are common human mind. Who has emotional mind and generally look for relationship. Remember very crucial point. That person is a common human being who has emotional mind and looks for relationship. As you know, a common person's mind is that the health of a common person completely depends upon the emotion of the mind. And the emotion of the mind is completely depend upon the relationship. Can you see the steps? The health of a common person completely depends upon the emotion of the mind. And interestingly, emotion of the mind completely depends upon on the relationship. So that means if there are no relationship, a person go crazy. So that means a common person looks for companionship. It's a very interesting point to observe. That's why a common person would like to claim, Hey, look, you belong to me, also I belong to you. So everywhere, the common person wants to put a stamp. That's why in a family, if you are not wanted, if you are not asked to do this, do that, all these things, you don't feel comfortable in your family either. Because you discover you don't belong to them, even though they belong to you. So when I belong to you, you belong to me. And this sense of belonging is called relationship. That is what called companionship. Now, please understand, when this does not happen the, I, the way I want, then what happens? Now, mind starts feeling lonely. And once mind starts feeling lonely, I have all sort of you know, psychological problem. And of course, if I go to any psychologist, what a psychologist will say? Hey, you need to socialize, you need to relate. If nothing else, at least relate with me. Come for sittings more and more. So, when this is the situation and to that person if we talk sannyasa what will be the meaning is a disaster that's why i also hear personally from some of you people especially those who 
go to different psychologist they also tell swami ji my psychologist was saying that how a swami can stay alone without any relationship he must be having some psychological problem <laughs> i also hear that you don't worry okay because a psychologist cannot think that there is something called mature mind that can stay without any relationship without any companion companionship because they think mind to become healthy you need relationship you need companionship you need to have sense of belonging i belong to you you belong to me now to them sanyasa is not going to work let us be very clear and careful if that person thinks to take sanyasa it is like running away from problem it is exactly like the person does not want to face problem so that's why lord krishna was very clear because that's why sanyasa ashram is something unique it is one way traffic because an immature mind always fluctuates this is another way of understanding immaturity if you fluctuate what is fluctuation fluctuation means your priority changes based on your insecurity whatever thought comes to you if that is your sense of insecurity now based on that insecurity because you give importance to that insecurity suddenly your priority changes and you dance based on your insecurity and insecurity is nothing projection to the insecurity <laughs> that's more interesting and here when a person fluctuates now because of insecurity now if that person gets into sanyasa then what will happen because it's one way traffic if you are brahmachari don't worry you can change you can become a grihastha if you are a grihastha you don't like married life enough so you can go to bana prastha okay <laughs> no you can go to sanyasa no problem okay but once you become sanyasa what you will do so you cannot reverse back it's very difficult like, even though some people reverse okay that's another question that's why uh, i remember pujya sam ji used to say very nicely and also i observe people in uh, rishikesh haridwar of course in uttarakashi sanyasis sometimes are more miserable they feel uncomfortable to tell but this is the truth they feel that they have taken a wrong decision that time god knows what happened to them and they are so restless that you cannot think of but outwardly they present themselves in a big way why all these things happens because the mind is not prepared so when antakarana suddhi is not there and if you talk or you take talk to them about sanyasa or you take sanyasa both <laughs> is not going to help is not going to be health so with this background that means the majority of the people are relationship based people companionship oriented people अहंकार राग द्वेष बेस्ट अंतकरण सो व्हेन द मेजोरिटी पीपल आर लाइक दिस लॉर्ड कृष्ण एड्रेसेस टू द मेजोरिटी सो व्हाट इज यज्ञ दान तप दिस इज हाउ ही सेज यज्ञ दान तप कर्म न त्याज्यम इति एंड इट इज कार्यम एव यज्ञदान तपश्चव दिज थ्री 
pavanani iti manishina so that means when your mind is not ready now what is to be done being asuddha antakarana now you must not think of renouncing any religious way of life because if you give up religious way of life please understand this vedanta is not going to enter in you without religious because just look at in india especially in india we have all problems politically socially financially now improving all the problems but people are happier than any part of the world you go to a slum you go to our himalayas how people are happy not because of anything but because of religious practices i want to make it very clear with you all see if you observe the difference especially i observe in chennai that uh, many people go to temple especially on pradosham day and a huge crowd but when you go around in pradosham time the moment you enter into the temple your half of the problem left behind and when you go to the shrine of course you ask for solve the problem okay that's another point oh god give me give that take care of this thing take care of my neighbor at least give sadbuddhi to my wife <laughs> okay if nothing else please give some sadbuddhi to my wife so that i can come to visit you more and more <laughs> however let us not get into so at least when you are going round inside the temple your problem is taken care of because you are being religious that's why a person to develop that religious aspect is must like you no know, putting some kumkumam or bihuti it's a simple but it needs a gut not only that it needs a strength commitment not i notice even if you people whether you are indian or overseas makes no difference you want the best without doing anything according to your convenient you want to do no no swami ji i am i don't want to be religious but i want to understand vedanta nothing will enter okay i can write it down this is a waste of my time and your time but still i love to talk because not for you for me okay <laughs> i am very clear because i need some audience okay to dwell upon this teaching nothing else so for me it is an idhyasanam so when i am talking this thing i am hitting myself remember this you happens to be targeted audience but honestly i am hitting myself i am the target of my own teaching and if you take it seriously is your problem that means it works that's why you can say swami ji i don't take anything seriously <laughs> then i say wow you are the best student okay <laughs> so i don't have to look for any student still i die even if also next uh, swami will come will teach you don't worry okay <laughs> because nothing enters in you how so here he says look i me being a common person let us say me being a common person yajna dana tap must not be given up and this yajna dana tap are religious activities so it has nothing to do with it especially in india if you observe i have seen this also if you go to any where especially i am starting with dana people don't look at anything they give something in fact in villages you get more than in city 
the riches in city poverty is in village but villagers are more because they give more because they are more religious can you see this point how so when i don't want to stretch yagya also the rituals starting with the five maha yagyas so you expect your atithi means a guest must telephone you inform you must follow the protocol if that goes little bit differently you go crazy now tell me what sort of maturity you have if this minimum things cannot be followed then how can you listen to vedanta yes there are different type of people will come crazy cranky if you are not in a position to communicate better not communicate it is your chitta shuddhi but what happens just observe i have also noticed many cases the moment a person goes away <sighs> you understand so what does it mean it is your sense of insecurity that you are projecting that's why what you will understand vedanta so that's why yagya means here only i am highlighting here manusa yagya okay panchay maha yagya jar de same thing also this you have runas depth rishi runa you are supposed to listen to scripture study scripture every day to take care of this rishi runa no swami ji i am busy i cannot so you are busy means what you are busy with your insecurity and when you are busy with your insecurity you are strengthening your insecurity can you see this point so unknowingly you are creating more problem for yourself that's why here is being said यज्ञ दान तपस्व पावना मनुषिणी सो व्वेन यू लुक एट दिस यज्ञ द पंच महायज्ञ दान शेयरिंग तप अस्टिटी सो दिज आर द फंडामेटाल रिलीजिअस् प्राक्टिसे आई एम यूज इन दिस वर्ड दिज आर द फंडामेटाल रिलीजिअस् प्राक्टिसे देन ओनली इट बिकम्स पावना इट बिकम्स प्युरीफायर अफ द माइंड if you do not look at as a fundamental religious practices whenever i feel like whenever i want to do or there is something let me do little puja let me do this that you would do that or swami ji once in a while i also do the fasting why because i have become fat that's why i want to be thin slim that's why i do fasting and this is my austerity <laughs> so I am saying Navratri. I do fasting. I said why? Because Navratri is good. I said why you are doing so much strong fasting so that I will become thin. <laughs> you understand? Is this tapas? Can you call that as tapas? Because tapas, the austerity, or dhanam, or yagya, to be looked at as fundamental. religious practices so that where your likes and dislikes are not taking front seat because once your likes and dislikes takes the front seat you know what is happening to you or what will happen to you so whole thing to look at is not allowing my likes and dislikes to take front seat because my likes and dislikes when it takes front seat that becomes obstacle for me in my life so if i have obstacles in my life 
Remember, all these obstacles are nothing, but it is my unnecessarily importance, give, giving importance to my likes and dislikes. Any obstacles that you are coming across in life. So that's why what is to be done? Remember, many people I see, especially with reference to Kunkumam, with reference to Bibhuti, and of course in India also nowadays more. Swamiji, if I put what other will think? All the religious practices are for weak mind. Please. Religious practices, please understand, religion is not for weak mind, it is for a mature mind. Even though wrongly have been present, the more you are matured, the more you become religious. In fact, the more you become religious, the more you become matured. That's why it is easier to deal with a religious person, maybe illiterate, uneducated, than to talk to a person who is highly illiterate but irreligious. You can't. So that's why what we need to do here is that, we say very carefully, when you look at this as religious fundamental practices, please understand, you will get two types of punyam. That is the most important thing. When you do all these things as and then, it takes care of few things. But when you look at religious fundamental practices, that means this is to be done in a regular basis, constantly, continuously. Now, it brings two types of punya. So, we say one is called, <coughs> sorry, spiritual punya. Anta punya, bahi punya. So, internal punya and another one is called external punya. So, what is external punya? Let us talk that first. So, external punya in the form of comforts. So, you will have all sort of comforts. You will have good name, good fame, good house, good car, good place to stay. That is nowadays the most important thing. All these things you will have because of this external punyam. And what is internal punyam? that we call as spiritual punyam also. The internal punyam is this, that being amanitam, adambitam, ahinsak, shanti, arjabam, etc. All the values. And when this internal punyam comes, you are comfortable within and with the help of external punyam, you are also comfortable externally to give comfort to others. Provided if you look at these three as fundamental religious practices. More of it we'll see tomorrow. Om Om Punnamada Punnamidam Purnat Punnamudachyate Purnasya Punnamadaya Purnameva Shishyade Om Shanti Shanti Shanti